we didn't succeed, mostly because I kept raising my hand and saying, maybe you want to say this. All right, well, thank you so much again. I really do appreciate your patience. Um, we are adding Linda Cooper's mom, Elsie Lentz, to the prayer list. She had another uh, mini stroke and fell, broke her glasses, gave herself a black eye. So please be praying for her. She is certainly a resilient woman. Um, do we have any other announcements? You can take Allison off of Allison Madison. She's totally doing good? Yeah. All right. Allison Madison? Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. You can take me off of your list. Because you can do a dance now? Yes. <laughs> All right. Good, Lori. Can you add my daughter, Jana Tampa? Spell it for me. But her first name? J oh, J-A-Y-N-A. Okay. What's going on with her? She had a Oh, okay. Oh, no. Is there any update on Mary Wolf? Is she still she in the hospital? She was home and She's home? She was and went right back in. Oh, dear. So, and then they said she'd be going to rehab after that. Okay. Okay, and Diane? We have a Christmas ornament out there from size 175. If anybody's interested in one, we have them hanging on a tree out there um, to see me afterwards. We can, they're $15. So anybody that's interested, and there are snacks out for us to get too. So. And we've decided at, at our last council meeting that if you don't buy the Christmas ornaments, then the the turkey and ham meal that we'll have on December 1st will be $15 and you'll get a free ornament. <laughs> birthday is Angie Brown, Larry Gross, Clayton Steinhauer, Ray Lynn Kimberly Crumb Berger, Shana Walker, and anniversaries are Bill and Sally Pinatek, and Bruce and Diane Keister. Happy anniversary, and happy birthday to Larry. Okay, and then next month's birthdays are Nathan and Nicole, Nathan Keister and Nicole Miller, and Roy and Joyce Ray. Thank you for seeing both of those. All right, let's pro Oh, yeah, Mary. Oh, my. What was her name, Mary? Mary. Oh, how about that? Oh, awesome. All right, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, 
our refuge, our delight, our beginning, and our end. Amen. Amen. Let us come in truth before the one who loves us and frees us from sin. Holy God of mercy, we confess that sin takes hold of us and draws us in, implicating us into the guilt of its harm. Because of these effects, we are disturbed in spirit. Our hearts cannot rest. Unbind our wills and set our souls free. Lead us again to the waters of the river, so that we may live just and generous lives for the good of your world and for the care of our neighbors. Help us follow in the servant way in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear these words, for they are trustworthy and true. Jesus Christ bore the sins of the entire world on the cross as a one and done. He died once for all, and so by doing swallowed up the power of sin, the extent of its harm, and the effects of death once forever. For his own sake, through his saving grace, and by his authority, you are forgiven. God remembers your sin no more. May your spirit be glad and your heart feel free. Rejoice. Amen.
I like how everybody knew, knew all the missing words that weren't written in the, the that aren't written in the hymnal. Did you all have had to learn this growing up? <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You're seated at the right hand.
today's second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 7. The former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing the office, but he holds his priesthood permanently, because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. And like the other high priest, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins, and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained sight and followed him on his way. The Gospel of our Lord. right before my overnight shift at the hospital began. The verses seemed rather appropriate since there were references to the Lord saving people, because everyone comes to a hospital to be saved, right? And of gathering all sorts of people, such as those from a distance like Adams and Franklin counties, Hanover and Hagerstown, as I was in York. Included with those the Lord will gather are people who cannot see or walk. Those with child and those in labor, yes, on any given day in any large region or hospital, the Lord will gather many from all directions, even some from so far away as would take hours to travel by foot, by camel, by chariot, other land vehicle or helicopter. Jeremiah wrote, a great company shall come weeping and be consoled as they are led along a straight path by brooks of water. And they won't stumble, for the Lord said, I have become a father to Ephraim, which is another name for Israel. Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people. The remnant of Israel which are people claimed by us and by you as being loved. As the psalmist wrote, restore our good fortune, so we may have dreams once again, like when our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with shouts of joy. So we too may say, the Lord has done great things, and we are glad indeed. Let those who sow with tears reap with songs of joy, shouldering their sheaves. My mom and grandmother, who were raised Baptists, used to sing the old hymn, Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. 
Upon leaving the on-call room to make evening rounds throughout the surgical and the ICU family waiting areas, I came upon the hospital's version of a large crowd. That is, groups of six or more family members bearing concern. They lined up chairs pushed against the walls, lie down across them, and some well-placed ottomans. They're surrounded by purses and parcels, beverages and food. They are people of various ages and ethnicities. Many are busy talking to other people and they appear to be in transition, changing shifts as it were, taking their turn to show up and be present amid a time of tragedy and unpredictable challenge. I introduce myself to some without interruption and others I plan to revisit within the hour. Meanwhile, a blind beggar whose name is Bartimaeus, which in fact does mean son of Timaeus, sits by the roadside. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth and his disciples were leaving Jericho, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You see, Jesus was not named according to Hebrew tradition, bearing the name of his human father, which would have resulted in him being called Bar Joseph. He was Jesus, son of David, or Bar David, a messianic title that would refer to his genetic lineage through David, since Mary was a descendant of David's son, Nathan and even of his adoptive father, Joseph, who was a descendant of David's son, Solomon. So Bartimaeus was the very first person outside of Jesus' disciples to recognize Jesus as the son of David, as the Messiah. In this way, Bartimaeus plays a classic character who's chosen to represent an, an obvious example. God says, look you guys, here's a perfect stranger, a literal blind man who's able to recognize Jesus for who he is. Without the benefit of sight, he sees what those closest to Jesus, his family, some disciples and others do not. An hour later in the hospital, the solitary individual in the surgical waiting room, a man's wife, was done talking on the phone. Her husband's unexpected surgery went well. He's going to be fine. She'll get to see him soon. Other family members in the ICU waiting room appeared equally appropriately tired and anxious. Though offered contact with a chaplain during previous shifts, they declined to accept such service. But as the hour grew late, perhaps the offer of a pillow or a blanket seemed less threatening than that of a prayer. Or maybe it could possibly lead to that. For in some ways, they were like the blind beggar sitting by the roadside. They were nearing exhaustion of personal resources. They were down on their luck, nearly desperate by their circumstance. So perhaps they would seize a rare opportunity for specific mercies to be shown. In the case of a young man who had fallen from a great height, his wife, in-laws, and parents had already been praying. and In fact, they were preaching to other families that God could be trusted. One son of a man who'd suffered a stroke after running out of his blood pressure medication agreed to prayer while another son of the gentleman who was my age, who was unconscious on a ventilator with a poor prognosis, translated my words from English to Spanish. Another daughter in another room, along with her children, granddaughters, grand and great-grandsons, all began to cry as we commended their dear matriarch, who was only in her 70s, to the God of her belief. While many sternly ordered them to be quiet, they cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. 
And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. Reading the phrase, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. Is helping to transform how I began to feel about being woken up by the loud sound of the beeper in the middle of the night during my on-call shift. Instead of hoping in the middle of the night that my services won't actually be required because no family is present or because the patient is getting a CAT scan or in the operating room, perhaps I, like Bartimaeus, might throw off my coverings spring up and wholeheartedly come to Jesus. Precisely because we and you and I and Bartimaeus can know that when we are summoned by God to physically appear and to spiritually come forth, that in that moment, we have come before the very one whom we have sought compassion from and to whom we have pleaded for mercy. In that very moment, God, like the best of all chaplains, Jesus asked, what exactly is it that you hope for? What is it that you wish for more than anything for God himself to do? And in asking for exactly what we want Jesus to do for us, our faith does become adequate to the circumstance being made well. Other verses to the old Baptist hymn read, Sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing, fearing neither clouds, nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. In the hospital and all over the world, most people who gather will eventually recover. Though many, as the hymn says, will go forth weeping, sowing for the master, sustained through a loss that their spirit often grieves. Jesus, the Bible, and the lyrics of Knowles Shaw the man who wrote Bring in the Sheaves in 1874, assured us that when our weeping's over, he will bid us welcome. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. So if Jesus said to you, what is it that you want me to do for you. How would you reply? It's only one question. It only requires one answer. One outspoken prayer. What is your most pressing need? Don't be embarrassed. Now's the moment you've always dreamed of. The chance that you always wanted to tell Jesus, the Son of God, who long ago was predicted to come as the Messiah from the birth lineage of King David, what you want him to do for you. How would you reply? One question, one answer, one outspoken prayer. I usually ask patients and their families to address these things. What is the thing that you're most afraid of? Or the thing that you really hope for? And why do I do that? Because these are the things that Jesus cares most about. 
And they are the things that God most wants to help us with. Now the thing that I do struggle with the most is seeing people of faith answer that question, honestly. And then witness the fact that they do not receive healing or are not delivered from death. Though in my heart and my mind and my spirit, I know that by becoming human and through death on a cross, that Jesus more than symbolically joined himself to the tragedies of human fate. I can only imagine how God grows weary watching people suffer. So I appreciate that the writer of Hebrews speaks of Jesus as holding the role of high priest forever, of being holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, all descriptions of perfection, forever making intercession and saving those who approach God through him as he sits exalted at the right hand of God above in the heavens. What Jesus offers is no less than himself. His perfect self. To those of us who are subject to weakness and death, I'm convinced there's no lack of mercy or compassion, even in death. Though I cannot always see it or speak to it, I know it's there. I know that Jesus will not pass by without hearing the cries of those who beg for mercy. Holy, 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 pure and blameless Christ, we lay before you all for whom we pray. We come before you ourselves, knowing all too well, or perhaps not knowing well enough, what about us or our lives is in need of your healing. Help us ask for your help with bold confidence, identifying you among all others as our best chance of becoming whole, happy, and forever in God's presence. In your holy name.
prayers this morning. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole of creation. Eternal Counselor, guide the church along your paths of mercy, directed to be a refuge where all are genuinely welcomed, their gifts celebrated, their needs acknowledged. We are like those who dream of the Lord doing great things for us. Eternal Nurturer, Preserve natural places for rest and rejuvenation. Guide the work of conservationists, park managers, urban planners, gardeners, and all caretakers of natural spaces. Attune us to the wonders we, we disregard or fail to notice. We are like those who dream of the Lord doing great things for us. Make us glad to carry the seed and help the world bear fruit. Eternal wisdom. Strengthen the voices of those who cry out for change to unjust systems. Give lawmakers, judges, and all who hope to occupy seats of power, listening and compassionate hearts. We are like those who dream of the Lord doing great things worldwide. Make us glad to carry the burden of helping all to experience joy. Eternal compassion, train us to respond to the cries of those in any kind of need. Give encouragement and comfort to those who call out for relief from pain, grief, or oppression, especially those in our prayer list. We are like those who dream of the Lord doing great things. Make them glad again. Help them return to the joy. Eternal servant, may truth and decency prevail. Reveal godly vision, wisdom, and discernment within our electoral process. Sharpen our nation's focus upon work for your heavenly kingdom on earth. We are like those who dream of the Lord doing great things for not only us. But for the entire world. Eternal hope. May the saints commune with and inspire us as we hold fast to the promise of being together forever in your presence. We dream of a great homecoming. Where the harvest of bounty is stored with gladness and joy. O Lord God, you have done great things for us. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your saving grace, your tender mercies and the steadfast love that you freely give as needed. With gladness and joy, we ask and receive these things for the sake of the entire world, now and forever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace.
So today we're going to listen to the Lord's Prayer and say it silently to ourselves. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please go downstairs to have some snacks and fellowship. Again, I thank you for your patience that we started late. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.